Another day, another story. The Battle of Fort Henry on February 6, 1862, was the first significant Union victory of the American Civil War, 1861-65. In an effort to gain control of rivers and supply lines west of the Appalachians, Union Brigadier General Ulysses S. Grant and Commodore Andrew Foote launched an attack on the lightly defended Fort Henry in Tennessee. Welcome to Tabot Eminent Channel. After a fierce naval bombardment, Confederate Brigadier General Lloyd Tillman secretly evacuated the bulk of his troops to nearby Fort Donelson before surrendering to Union forces. The fall of Fort Henry, followed ten days later by the capture of Fort Donelson, opened up both the Cumberland and Tennessee rivers to Union control, cutting off Confederate access to two key waterways for the remainder of the war. The Battle of Fort Henry was a significant engagement during the American Civil War. It took place on February 6, 1862, and was one of the early Union victories in the Western theater of the war. Here are the key details and significance of the Battle of Fort Henry. Context. 1. The American Civil War began in April 1861, and by early 1862, both the Union and Confederate armies were actively engaged in various theaters of the conflict. 2. The Western theater encompassed the Mississippi River and its tributaries, and control of these waterways was of great strategic importance for both sides. Key Players 1. Union forces were led by Brigadier General Ulysses S. Grant. 2. Confederate forces defending Fort Henry were commanded by Brigadier General Lloyd Tillman. Fort Henry 1. Fort Henry was located on the Tennessee River in western Tennessee and was part of the Confederate defenses in the region. 2. The fort was not particularly well constructed and was vulnerable to attacks from the water due to its low elevation. The Battle 1. Union forces, under Grant's command, launched a naval and land assault on Fort Henry. 2. Union gunboats, led by Flag Officer Andrew H. Foote, bombarded the fort from the river, while Grant's troops advanced on the landward side. 3. The Confederate defenders, realizing the fort's vulnerability, decided to abandon it after a relatively brief engagement. 4. Fort Henry surrendered to Union forces, marking a significant victory for the Union. Significance 1. The fall of Fort Henry allowed Union forces to gain control of the Tennessee River, an important waterway that extended into Confederate territory. 2. This victory opened up opportunities for the Union to advance further into Tennessee and split the Confederate defenses in the Western Theater. 3. The capture of Fort Henry was a precursor to the Battle of Fort Donelson, which occurred shortly afterward in February 1862. 3. The victory at Fort Donelson solidified Union control over the region and marked Grant as a rising star in the Union Army. 4. These early Union victories in the Western theater set the stage for future campaigns and had a significant impact on the overall course of the Civil War. The Battle of Fort Henry was an important early step in the Union's efforts to gain control of key waterways and territory in the Western theater of the American Civil War, ultimately contributing to the Union's strategic advantage in the conflict. History of Fort Henry Fort Henry was named for Confederate Senator Gustavus Henry and built in 1861 during the Civil War. Located on the Tennessee River, it was a critical point of defense for the Confederacy, protecting Nashville, Tennessee and the railroad route between Bowling Green, Kentucky and Memphis. Battle of Fort Henry begins. The Battle of Fort Henry was an uneven one from the start. The fort had been partially flooded by recent rainstorms, and the bad weather had left many of the troops left to defend it ill. To make matters worse, much of the Confederate weaponry dated from the War of 1812. Brigadier General Ulysses S. Grant and his troops arrived near the banks of the river on February 4 and 5, 1862, disembarking just out of range of Confederate cannons. The fort was defended by less than 3,400 Confederate soldiers. In comparison, Grant had 15,000 Union troops at his disposal, supported by ironclad and wooden gunboats led by Flag Officer Andrew H. Foote. Foote began his attack at noon on February 6, 1862. Grant's army, meanwhile, was delayed by muddy roads. Foote's Union ships shot at the fort from less than 300 yards away, damaging all of its defensive guns and killing 21 Confederate soldiers. Tillman, knowing the situation was bleak, moved the majority of his troops from the difficult-to-defend Fort Henry to Fort Donelson, just 10 miles down the Cumberland River. The Confederate surrender was received on board the Cincinnati, 
with 12 Confederate officers and 82 men present. Foote's fleet suffered 32 casualties, while battle damage to the ironclad Essex left it out of commission for the rest of the war. Importance of Battle of Fort Henry A week after the Union victory at Fort Henry, the two forces would face off again at the Battle of Fort Donelson. In addition to marking the first major Union victory in the Civil War, the Battle of Fort Henry, along with the subsequent Union victory at the Battle of Fort Donelson, restored Western and Middle Tennessee and most of Kentucky to the Union. Proceeding Events 1. Prior to the Battle of Fort Henry, Ulysses S. Grant had been appointed as a Brigadier General in the Union Army, despite having a somewhat checkered military career up to that point. 2. Grant was given command of the District of Cairo, which encompassed parts of Kentucky and Tennessee. 2. He recognized the strategic importance of controlling the Tennessee and Cumberland rivers, which could be used by the Union to penetrate deep into Confederate territory. Strategic Importance 1. The Tennessee River flowed into northern Alabama, and its control would allow Union forces to threaten Confederate positions further south. 2. The fall of Fort Henry would also put pressure on Fort Donelson, which was situated on the Cumberland River to the east. 2. Capturing both forts would effectively open up a corridor deep into the Confederacy. The battle itself. 1. On February 6, 1862, Union naval forces led by Flag Officer Andrew H. Foote and his ironclad gunboats, including the USS Essex and the USS St. Louis, approached Fort Henry. 2. The naval bombardment, though relatively short, was effective in damaging the fort and convincing the Confederate garrison, commanded by General Lloyd Tillman, to surrender. 3. Grant's land forces were not heavily engaged in the battle, as the Confederate defenders realized the futility of their situation and opted to abandon the fort. Aftermath 1. The fall of Fort Henry was a major victory for the Union, and it boosted the confidence of both Ulysses S. Grant and the Northern public. 2. Grant's decision to push further east to capture Fort Donelson, which was considered a more formidable position, led to the subsequent Battle of Fort Donelson. 3. The Battle of Fort Donelson, February 11, 16, 1862, was a much larger and more intense engagement, where Grant's forces faced stiff resistance but ultimately prevailed. 3. This victory earned Grant the nickname, Unconditional Surrender. Grant and solidified his reputation as a tenacious and effective commander. 4. The capture of Fort Henry and Fort Donelson opened up Kentucky and much of Tennessee to Union control and marked the first major Union successes in the Western theater. The combined victories at Fort Henry and Fort Donelson were pivotal in securing a Union foothold in the Western theater and set the stage for future campaigns, including the eventual capture of Memphis, Tennessee and the opening of the Mississippi River, which would further divide the Confederacy and impact the outcome of the American Civil War. Confederate Defense 1. Fort Henry was strategically located at the western edge of Tennessee on the Tennessee River. 1. It was part of a defensive line established by the Confederacy to guard against Union incursions into the Western Confederacy. 2. The fort was named in honor of Henry Knox, the first Secretary of War in the United States. 3. General Lloyd Tillman, who commanded the Confederate garrison at Fort Henry, recognized that the fort's location on low, swampy ground made it vulnerable to flooding and naval bombardment. Union Preparations 1. Union forces, led by General Ulysses S. Grant, had been preparing for an assault on Fort Henry for several weeks. 1. Grant recognized the importance of capturing key river forts to control the Tennessee and Cumberland rivers. Two. Grant's plan was to utilize naval gunboats to bombard the fort from the river while his ground forces advanced on the fort's landward side. Innovative Naval Tactics 1. Flag Officer Andrew H. Foote commanded the Union Naval Forces. 1. Foote's innovative use of ironclad gunboats was a key factor in the success of the Union's assault on Fort Henry. 2. The ironclads, including the USS Essex and the USS St. Louis, were relatively new warships with iron plating that made them resistant to traditional naval artillery. 2. This allowed them to get close to the fort and deliver precise and devastating firepower. The Surrender 1. The Union gunboats began their bombardment of Fort Henry on February 6, 1862. 1. The Confederate defenders, under heavy fire and facing rising floodwaters from the river, 
quickly realized they were in an untenable position. 2. General Tillman made the difficult decision to surrender the fort. 2. He and his garrison of around 3,000 Confederate soldiers marched out of the fort and were taken as prisoners of war by the Union forces. 3. The surrender occurred just a few hours after the initial bombardment began, making the Battle of Fort Henry a relatively brief engagement. Union Celebration and Momentum 1. The fall of Fort Henry was celebrated as a significant victory in the North. 1. It was the first major victory of 1862 for the Union and buoyed Northern morale. 2. The quick and decisive victory at Fort Henry set the stage for Ulysses S. Grant's subsequent campaigns in the Western Theater, which would earn him a reputation as a capable and aggressive military commander. Impact on the Western Theater 1. With Fort Henry now in Union hands, the Tennessee River was open for Union use. 1. This allowed for further advances into Confederate-held territory in Tennessee and Alabama. 2. The capture of Fort Henry was a precursor to the Battle of Fort Donelson, which took place shortly afterward in February 1862. 2. The Union's victory at Fort Donelson had even greater implications, as it secured the surrender of an entire Confederate army and further cemented Grant's reputation. The Battle of Fort Henry, while relatively short and less well-known than some other Civil War battles, played a crucial role in setting the stage for Union successes in the Western theater and contributed to the overall Union war effort in the early years of the American Civil War. Thanks for watching. Request you to subscribe the channel.